universities, health organizations, everybody that I've encountered in my former career as a pharmaceutical executive are out there with their hands out. You know, everybody's begging for money. Nobody has any money. The government doesn't have any money. Universities, universities don't have money. Nobody's money. The only ones that have money are these big multinational corporations. And they have lots of money. And they use that money to basically buy influence. And the way it's done is, number one, you give these organizations and institutions grant, grants for various kinds of research. You do uh, develop research together with them. You establish friends. You make sure that they become beholden to you. Um, and you also pay individual professors and doctors and researchers directly. You may pay them as speakers to travel around the country, uh, $1,000, $2,000 per day, sometimes more. Uh, you um, uh, give them money for programs, that the educational programs, where they can make a profit, and then they put on these programs. And they're supposed to be third party independent from the company, which is all fine. But as you and I can both imagine, if you have a promotional budget at a corporation, you're probably going to give that money to the universities that do the programs that most support your drug. And the ones that don't or are critical in any shape, way or form, they're not going to get anything. And everybody obviously knows that this is how things work. And, and that means that even if you can officially claim, well, this, we, this is arm's length, we didn't have anything to do with it, we just gave them a grant, they can do whatever they want with it. Reality is, they're not going to continue to get money unless they're saying what you want them to say. They know it, you know it, it's only maybe the public that doesn't know it. And, and that's how you influence the medical establishment uh, simply with money.